Hey, welcome to my garage. Today is all about checking on those items that we've just chosen to overwinter in our um, in our unheated garage that doesn't freeze. Previously, I've done videos on how to prepare your uh, pelargoniums, otherwise known as geraniums, how to overwinter your begonia tubers, uh, as well as lifting and overwintering your dahlia tubers. Now, in any of these videos, when you watch from the ones that I've seen uh, that are made previously, uh, folks are always going on about how you want to make sure to, to, you know, you do this, you do that, you do this, put it in this, put it in that, whatever the case may be, and then store it in an unheated basement or your garage somewhere where it's not going to freeze, but it does get cool. Um, so it's not, you know, not a heated, not a heated area. And then they leave you with, check on it every few weeks or commonly it's check on it at the holidays so around thanksgiving around christmas uh pick a holiday in january depending on the zone you live pick a holiday in february <clears throat> so that uh, you're sure that everything is doing well and that's just kind of where it's left well in this video let's take a look at it see how things are going this takes a little time depending on how much you've got going on, but we're going to start with our, we're going to just call them geraniums. That's what people commonly know them as. And so I just, so this is kind of my patio corner. I've got some decorations that I have out there, but I also have uh, racks full of all of my uh, different bulbs and tubers and, and things of that nature that I'm keeping. So let's take a look. Let's pull down a, a geranium. <clears throat> now, uh, as Check out my previous video. Um, I chose to use a cardboard box and I have not, and just so you know, it's been about a month and a half. I probably should have been checking on these a couple weeks ago, but the, uh, but I, I've not opened a box. So, um, I am just as, I am just as nervous as you are to know whether or not this is working. Uh, this is the first year that I've, I've done these this way. I just didn't have the room in my, in my, um, greenhouse so let's pull it out and check it check to see how things are so here is here is our our first geranium there's a little green here there so what i'm looking for is i'm looking to see is there any mold mildew anything that looks suspect and then i'm going to cut that away so uh the geranium will start to look kind of frazzled there's still a little uh, green here, so I know that there's still some life in there. And then I'm feeling, is it is it just super dry? Um, is there still some moisture there? Well, you know what? This feels a little dry. So I have, I have a bucket of water, and I'm using lukewarm water. And I'm just going to dip the root ball in that. I'm going to let it hold for just a uh, just a little bit just so it can soak up a little bit of moisture. Because the one thing I don't want is I don't want my roots. So a geranium, that's roots, that's not a tuber, that's not a, bul uh, a bulb. That is that is just roots, and I, I don't want them to completely dry up. Well, that's soaking in there. We're gonna look at this other one. And we have no, we have no mold, no, no mildew. I'm going to cut off some of these, some of these uh, dead, dead leaves. And I'm also looking for pests. You know, is it, is it uh, just, you know, teeming with ants or, um, I don't know, aphids, uh, I'm not sure else, what else it would team with. And then I'll take that out, shake that. Then I'm just going to put it right back in the box. Going to get this one in here. Okay. Just giving it a nice, nice drink there. And while that's happening, I'm going to set that aside. And while that's happening, let's check on our begonias. So for my begonias, I had a different kind of, um, cardboard box you could use um, 
you know, you could use a container of this sort. And again, now we're going to open this up. <laughs> and I have not seen these yet, but we're going to open these up and we're going to check for the same things. Now this, this I used um, peat moss as my medium. You could use uh, vermiculite. And then I'm going to take out my I'm going to take out my tube, my, uh, my tuber and I'm checking to see how it's doing. Is it, uh, is it really shriveling up? Then it's getting too dry. Uh, then I'm going to want to, in this case, if it was getting too dry, what I would do is I would, because I'm using peat moss, I would dampen the peat moss, mix it really good. And then let's sit in there so it can absorb some of the moisture out of that. This, however, feels good. There is no rot. It is still very firm. So this is good. This one, this one, we're just going to cover that one back up. I'm going to check on some of the other ones. Let's see what else I had in there. This one. This one's got a lot, little bit of gift to it. So you know what I'm gonna do? First of all, this is set for a little bit. So it's got some moisture going on. Let the, I don't want excess water in the box because I don't want to create an opportunity for mold. This one I'll just set aside. We've already looked at it. Don't go away. Oh my gosh. Hang on. I'm trying to put to get a container. I was ill, Ill prepared. So this is what I'm going to do. I am going to dump my, my, my peat moss into my bin. I'm going to add a little bit of water, little bit, and then I'm going to mix that around. So it can absorb some of that water. So we keep saying a little bit. I'm not sure if you saw me how much I poured in there. But you know, peat moss takes a little bit to absorb the water so that it can get damp. My goal is I want a damp, damp, not wet, damp, damp peat moss. Put a little bit more in. Probably a good thing I didn't choose to wear my gloves today, so now I can just make a, a giant mess of things. All right, you might not be able to see this, but I'm just trying to mix it in. I'm trying to get that, trying to get that water absorbed. All right, so now this is damp. I'm gonna put a little bit at the bottom of my of my cardboard box. Then I'm going to lay my begonia tubers in it and then I will just cover it. So again I'm doing this because that one, the one felt just um, was like it was getting soft. It was getting soft. Not, it wasn't mushy so it wasn't like rotting. It was getting soft so that's what I was looking at. And then we'll close this one back up again. And we'll put it back up. So that's red begonia. I'm gonna set that off to the side because I, I'm gonna to have to go through all of these. Let's look at one more. Just because that was kind of interesting. This was my tropical begonia. Well, that's what I called it, tropical. And now I'm feeling this. And this one, this one was a single, let me dig around in my peat moss. Yes, this was a single tuber. It is still very firm. We have no rot, no damage. So that goes back in the goes back in the box. Cover it with the peat moss. My guess is, uh, shortly after Christmas, when I check on these again, that I will probably have to do some uh, 
uh, regulate that moisture a little bit. So that was the begonias. I've still got a few more, but you don't need to watch all those. However, let's check out the dahlias. Dahlias, now here, you are storing them in vermiculite or peat moss. Look, I have a container. It does not breathe. I mean, it's not a tight seal, so it breathes maybe a little bit. And, and perhaps you can see, so this was stored in damp peat moss, and you can see some of the, you know, there's still, you can tell there's still moisture in there. So we should be good. The main thing that you're checking on and you gotta be cautious of when we're talking about dahlias is that you don't want them to mold um, or rot. So you, you've got to be cautious of how, how damp you have that. So I know that just by touching it, it is still damp. And then I'm going to look at my, I'm going to look at my tuber and I'm looking to see, I'm looking to see and feel, is there any mushy? Oh, look at that. Oh, this guy, oh, this is exciting. There's an eye. That thing's actually starting to grow. We're, we're just gonna not get too excited because it's still a couple months early. But, uh, so we know that that's good. Here's another one. We have an eye opening on that one. And then you're just gonna check for each of them. The last thing you wanna do is to leave one that's rotting or molding in the container with the others for fear that it'll spread. And be cautious when you're handling them that you don't, you don't snap its neck. So this one, this one is very good. This one is very good. Now I will cover them back up so that they are not exposed to the air. And put the seal back on it. And then that is welcome to go back to its container. So as you see, it's a very simple process. Could be time consuming depending on how much you have. But bottom line, this is what you're looking at. Depending on the medium and how it's stored, so dahlias, if it was something that the directions were to keep in moistened, um, peat moss, vermiculite, or some other medium, then you're checking to make sure that it mold has not started. Um, it hasn't, you're checking to make sure none of thing, nothing is rotting because you'll want to remove that. If it's something like begonias, for example, that you're storing in a dry material uh, medium, then you're going to want to check to make sure that the, the begonia tubers haven't, uh, aren't starting to shrivel. Um, if that's the case, you're going to want to add a little moisture, but we don't want a damp medium. We just want to add a little moisture and you could simply just mist that and then put it back on there. The water will adhere. Again, you're checking for mold, damage, uh, and then insects. You're looking for uh, pests, whether it be ants, uh, uh, white flies, uh, whatever might be coming to life in there. Geranium, something that we store as a bare root item. There you're checking to make sure that it hasn't got too dried out. We wanna keep a little moisture. Um, but with the leaves and stalks, stems that were in there when you put it in, you wanna make sure that Obviously, or maybe it's not obvious. That's why you're here watching. <coughs> you want to see that again, mold, mildew, uh, pests. So that's what you're checking. And then how damp or how, how dry is it? So I err on the side of caution. So like when I felt the root ball on those uh, geraniums, pelargoniums, I knew that in my mind that was too dry. So I, I dipped it in some water let it sit there for a little bit. Hopefully it'll absorb some moisture. We're not looking to wake it up, but absorb some moisture, uh, shook off the excess water, and then I put it in there. I hope you found this informative. Please uh, feel free to comment. If you have any questions, I, I'm usually pretty good about responding to all questions that might be put in the comments. And 
check back, hit that subscribe button. I've got a couple other videos coming up, getting ready to get some fuchsia starts going. Uh, we've had a mild winter, so check out my uh, propagating fuchsias, which will be coming soon. Until next time, happy gardening. And don't forget, just because you put it in the garage or the basement or the bottom of an unheated closet, don't forget these guys. They need some attention throughout the winter. I've got some work to do to get these going, um, just so I've got, I'm comfortable going through them all. Until next time, happy gardening.